welcome back to my channel my name is Kylie and I am the owner and the creator of the steel canvas um, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I make this adorable little witch's brew cup today um, how to do the drips how to do everything that's involved with this cup um, I'm gonna have a link in the description down below for every product or tool that I use um, to make this cup um, if you guys have any questions um, that I don't really go over in the tutorial, um, please make sure to go ahead and ask in the comments and I'll do my best to respond and answer any questions that you have. Um, and if you guys like this tutorial and you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also the bell so you're notified every time that we post a new video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy the video and it, like I said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments down below and let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, so I'm gonna talk about everything that we're gonna use through this entire tutorial. So a um, couple of things, if you're a beginner, you might need to know these things. If you are not a newbie, then you probably already have most of these things um, at hand, but if, you're, if you don't, these are a couple things that you're gonna need. This one's pretty basic. You don't need too, too many things, um, but you're gonna need some popsicle sticks or like a epoxy stir stick or something to stir your epoxy and to apply the drips. Um, you are gonna need some neon green fluorescent green um, acrylic paint. You're gonna need, you don't have to have this, but I like to add it to make it a little bit darker, um, but you don't have to have uh, any alcohol inks. I just like to add it. Um, You're going to need some green glitter. Doesn't matter what kind, you can use whatever. I just prefer these from the glitter run. They're one of my favorites. Um, this is the glitter that I use on the base of the cup. So I spray painted it black um, and I use Rust-Oleum um, matte finish, I believe, um, spray paint. And this is called Cinder from the Glitter Grind. It has almost like a blue hue to it. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's got like a blue, midnight blue color to it. You can use whatever you, color you want for the base. Like really you could change this entire thing up by changing the colors. Um, you're gonna need a sanding block. You're also going to need, not pictured here, you're gonna need um, some alcohol um, and some uh, nitrile gloves and a mask to use uh, for proper PPE, which is super, super important when you're working with epoxy that you wear nitrile gloves, not latex, nitrile gloves, and you wear a proper um, organic compound. I can't talk. Proper PPE, if you don't know what that is, Google it, do your research. Anyways, moving on. Um, and then I used a 20 ounce modern curve tumbler from Hog, which I got from the Stainless Depot. Um, and you're gonna wanna prep and sand and clean off with 91% uh, alcohol and before you do anything to it. Um, but this is all the stuff that you're gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on into mixing the uh, colors for the drip um, in this little guy here. You're also gonna need some measuring cups, some epoxy, part A, part B. I use one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so those are all the things that you're going to need. So we're gonna go ahead and hop on into how you mix the neon colors into the epoxy to make the drips. All right, so we're back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the glitter. I like to add the glitter first just so I can make sure I have enough in there. Um, and I just add a little bit like that and I add a majority of it's gonna be this neon, but you don't wanna to add too, too much, but I just add about that. And I add one to two drops of this. I don't know why I do this. I do this every time. I don't change anything that I do if I like the way. I did four drops there, but no science behind it. Um, I don't know why I always do that. I like to do it. Don't ask me why, I just do. And then I add just a little, I don't know how you call that measurement, a dollop, maybe a little bit more about that and there you go there's no science behind it there's no measuring i just do it by eyeballing it i'm sure you guys could change it up however you want and then i just mix it and you mix it mix it mix it if it's not a color that you like which it does look a little bit dark for me um i will add a little bit more of the fluorescent green you don't want to add too much acrylic just because it'll make it set way faster um and it will also make it really really stringy but sometimes it helps it a little bit. There we go, that's like almost perfect. So this is the kind of the color that I'm going for. You guys can change it up, you can make it red, you can make it yellow, you make it black, purple, whatever color you want the drips to be, you can do that. And then you're just gonna let this sit 
for 45 minutes to an hour if you're not using fast set. Fast set's a lot harder to work with. I don't recommend it for the drips. Um, you can use it, but it's gonna be up to you to watch it carefully because it does get hot really fast and it does um, change rapidly. So you wanna wait 45 minutes to an hour for regular curing epoxy. Um, and then you are gonna wait until it's really, really stringy, which I, or not stringy, really, really thick, um, which I will show you. You guys will see that whole process in just a second. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and hop into the next step. All right, so I am back. So this cup is already prepped, spray painted, glittered and has one coat of epoxy on it. So I sanded and sprayed, uh, sanded, uh, washed off with Dawn dish soap, 91% uh, alcohol. I wiped it down. Um, I then spray painted it black and then glittered it. You guys can glitter with whatever color you like. Um, I just did like a black, blue, midnight blue color. You can do whatever color you'd like. So I already have this ready to go and it is epoxied with one coat. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but if you are using a chunky glitter, you're going to want to make sure that this is completely smooth. Um, ignore my nails. I was playing Play-Doh with my son. <laughs> um, but I have the decal all ready to go. Um, I can uh, link the description for the Etsy that I purchased this off of. Um, and so, I, like I said, if you used a chunky glitter, you're going to want to make sure that it's um, completely fine. Or completely smooth, I'm sorry. Okay, well, I almost completely forgot um, to record me putting the decal on. So I use um, Scotch uh, masking tape. You can use painter's tape. You can use, uh, sometimes you use Cricut uh, transfer tape. I just prefer using the painter's tape because it is cheaper and I like the way that it transfers stuff. So I just went ahead and put the uh, tape over top of the decal. I'm going to varnish it a little bit, not too, too much. I don't press too hard. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull this decal off. Need to varnish it a little bit more. And once you get the first one off, it's usually pretty good. Yeah, there you go. All right, so let's see if it's gonna make a liar out of me. It is a little bit, but just kidding, it's not. You wanna make sure you get every little piece up. So even like that little B right there, it was not wanting to come up. You wanna make sure you watch very carefully when you're pulling off your decals. And there we go. So we have it there. And let me make sure that I'm in frame. Um, I just use these guys here. I just taped together two little uh, foam inserts and I just place my cup on there like so and I kind of eyeball it. Since this is gonna have drips on the top, I'm gonna place this almost in the middle. Um, I eyeball it. You guys can measure, do whatever you like, um, what, whatever is easiest for you guys. I like to eyeball it. I also stand up when I do it because it tends to be a little bit uh, straighter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I might have a little bit of a wrinkle there, but I can fix that. We're gonna go ahead and just Press it on out. All right. All right. And we're going to go ahead and peel off the tape. I like doing the tape also because you can peel off one little layer at a time and you have, to me, I have um, less chance of pe pulling up the decal when I do it this way. I don't know why, it just tends to, yeah, I did have a little bit of a wrinkle there, but yeah, super easy to get out. Um, so I definitely noticed when I started using the painter's tape instead of the transfer tape that I had less um, pulling up with my decals. Because like I said, you can do one little section at a time Looking good, looking good. All right, so as you can see, I have a couple little imperfections like here, there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm gonna try to push them on out. And if I don't have luck with that, like that little bubble right there, I'm gonna take a, take a super sharp, sharp X-Acto knife and just poke a little hole and boom, 
there it is. It just comes right on out and you won't be able to see that little hole because it's so tiny. And most of the time, if you have any little imperfections like this with on a curved cup, you have more of an issue. Um, you can just push them on out. And this is going to be a personal cup for myself. So I'm not 100% worried about these little imperfections. If this was for a customer, I would care a little bit more. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to overdo and overthink. All right, so that looks pretty good. We're gonna wanna get all these little guys out. And like I said, just popping a little hole helps a lot. All right, so there is the decal. And like I said, um, let me check this really quick so you guys can see. It's getting a little thicker. But it is not quite there yet, so. I'll be back when it's thickened up a little bit more. All right, we are back. And I changed the angle just a bit, uh, just so that way you guys can watch what I'm doing from this angle. And this has thickened up quite a bit. It is not quite there, but we're gonna hang out and talk for a minute um, while this is thickening up because it happens lightning fast. So I want you guys to kind of see that process of how quickly this can go from being super loose to being hard as a rock in seconds. So um, once you get to this point, it goes pretty, pretty, pretty quick. So like I said, I kind of wanted to keep stirring it on camera and show you guys the process. Um, so what we're going to do once we get to that point is we're gonna start from the backside and you're gonna wanna drag the popsicle stick like so. And you're gonna wanna take a little, it's gonna look like a hot mess for a little bit, um, but you're gonna wanna take your time and you're only gonna wanna take a little bit of a time. Uh, it just depends on how big you want your drips. Um, I prefer them to be like yay thick. Um, I don't want them to be like super big. I don't want them to be really tiny. I like them right in the middle to each their own, um, but you're just gonna wanna keep stirring it just to keep an eye on it. Cause like I said, right now it's like slime consistency, but you see how fast that's running? You don't want it to be that fast because then it'll run quickly down your cup and you'll end up with drips all the way down at the bottom. Um, so like I said, we're just gonna wait until it gets to that point. And I wanted to kind of do it on camera so you guys can watch um, and see the process of how quickly it goes. So it will happen pretty quickly. And once I get to that point, I will start, which I am almost to that point now um, of wanting to go ahead and put the drips on but I don't wanna to have to baby it, which means I don't wanna to have to sit here and watch the drips for an hour. <laughs> so I wanna make sure it gets right to that point where I'm happy with the consistency and I don't have to sit here and keep flipping my cup. Cause you can flip it as needed to make sure the drips don't go too far down the cup, which I'll show you that as well. And if you've done a drip cup before, you know that this is a little bit tedious, but for the newbies in here that have never done a drip cup before, I kind of want you to go through the process of this because this is like the most critical point. Because if not, you're gonna waste all this epoxy and 45 minutes to an hour of your life waiting for this epoxy to get to this point. So I don't want you guys to mess it up. So I'm letting you see the process at the very end of waiting for this to cure. So you see how it's slowing down just a little bit? I want it to be a little bit slower than that before I am happy with it. But I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and start. It's a little bit runnier than I normally would like, but I don't wanna wait too long. So we're gonna go ahead and start. See how it's getting stringy? That's what you want. You want the stringiness to start happening. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys at this angle. Hopefully that is a good angle for you guys. It's kind of a weird, uh, so you want to get all the little stringies off because you don't want them to touch your cup. See, I'm going to get about this much on my popsicle stick. And I'm just going to, I'm going to start from the back. And we're just going to scrape it off. I'm 
just gonna kind of run my run it over that way and let's watch this drip really quickly just to see how fast it's moving which that's moving a little faster than I would like but I think it'll be okay once we start because we don't want to wait too long like I said um, you can also add glow in the dark powder to these um, you can add you can do this in any color you want I've seen people do them in black I've seen people do them um, in red and all sorts of stuff so you guys can play around with this uh, whatever colors you guys want you want to make sure you catch these little stringies because if not they will uh, get on your cup so I'm gonna do a bigger one right here because I know we're getting close to the front of the cup And it's gonna look kind of ugly at first, but that's okay. It'll start looking cuter in a moment. So I just kind of play with it to get it to come off nicely. And you can do that because it will go into the other side that like right there will end up morphing with the other uh, piece, other drip. So see how it's getting super stringy. We're just going to keep on keeping on. So I decided that I wanted to just go ahead and speed through this part um, just because it gets a little bit tedious, um, but just continue to pull the epoxy off onto the cup as you see I'm doing here. And I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward. Okay guys, we are back and off camera, I mixed together about 15 milliliters of uh, KS resin part A and part B. And I let it sit for a few minutes just until it got warm to the touch. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a medium layer of epoxy over the entire cup. Um, make sure that you get really good in between each little drip. You're gonna wanna make sure you focus in there. Um, and I'm just gonna do one layer of this and then I'm gonna inspect it to see if I need to do one more coat after that just making sure the whole entire cup is smooth um, and free of any bumps and if I need to sand anything which I don't believe that I will um, so we're just going to go ahead and fast forward and then you're pretty much done with the cup and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you guys have any questions like I said just go ahead and pop them in the comments below and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and learned a little bit